What's up, everybody? So Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with your comp and mountain source. Today's film is Lesson of the Evil. 2012? 2012? Lesson of the Evil. 2012. 2012. Ako no Kyoten, original title. Directed by Takashi Miike. Based on a novel by Yusuke Kishi. Written by Takashi Miike. A popular high school teacher concocts an extreme plan to deal with the rise of bullying and bad behavior among the student body. Bullshit! That's not what's in the movies about. Starring Nicole. Oh, yeah, uh, I remember I read the wrong names again. Nicole Balsam. That must be from a fucking dub. Anyway, so the movie stars Takuyuki yeah, Yamada. Nicole Carlson. What? Yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> she must be from a dub because she's on the IMDb as a girl named Maggie. But that's like, I don't remember any Maggie in this fucking film. Uh, yeah. So where's Hasumi? Who's playing Hasumi in this movie? Because the IMDb for this film is uh, he, uh, Hideki Ito. Hideki. I don't know. What, well, no, that's how it's spelled, Hideki. If you go to the, if you literally go to the IMDb, you can see that they mismatched. Uh, they just put like the the least important characters as the main characters, and yeah, uh, you know what, what? What the hell, actually? It's and really plus, weird. they have a character who's named Dave in the film. Call him Clay. So I don't they know what's going on. They got the main star on. like halfway down the page. Okay, H- Hideaki Ito. That's his name. Uh, plays Seiji Hasumi, who's the main teacher in this film. And then there's a whole bunch of other characters in this movie, and. Uh, We'll just call them by their stereotypical look, stereotypical looks, and I don't mean in a racist way. I meant the way that they act in the film. Danny would like it to be stereotypical racist, but I'm I trying would to not him even out. ever say that. Malarkey. So this film, what is this film about? It is about. Uh, well, it's definitely not about what the thing on the IMDb says. It's about a like sociopath murderer teacher who's pretends to be like all friendly and nice, and then you find out he's like a sick fuck. Well, you find out pretty relatively soon in the film, but nobody else finds out. And then there's like a hour-long murder spree. So this is our actually our third recording of this episode, and we we're doing it for the 15 viewers on YouTube and the third time charm, the 20 plus listeners on our on our uh, Tumblr. Uh, so we did this because I fucked up the first time. Uh, you fucked up the second time, and hopefully this yeah. isn't a fuck up the third time. It's third time's Yeah, charm. but we've taken a month break between each one, so... Yeah, that's it. That's true. <laughs> so we've had our recovery time. So this Lesson of the Evil film, essentially what this movie is, is a Takashi Miike film. We've done Takashi Miike films before. We've done uh, Gozu, which I believe is Danny's favorite Miike film. We've done yeah. uh, Audition. Uh, we also... Happiness we? of the Kokoros. Katakuris. We've also, we've also done... Um, uh, Itchy the Killer, which is my favorite. Uh, oh, we did the Miki one film. with that that weird fucked up family that the guy is like Visitor uh, Q. Red, That's a great Visitor one. Q, yeah. That movie uh, made comedy about about a man uh, having sex with a body of a dead woman, and during uh, mid coitus, he puts his hand under her, says, "Wow, the body can still get wet," and then he says, "Oh no, it's just shit." No, and he starts screaming. It's <laughs> it's a laugh riot. That movie. It really is one of the greatest movies ever a made. Fa- but a warm, friendly thriller. <laughs> it's a it's a movie where a family gets together and kills their child's bully. It's a comedy that a uh, bullies, and it's a it's a great movie. It's funny, but literally, Disney's, do, do Disney's not, uh, best work. Do not show that movie to anybody that you think would think bad of you because it's a crazy film. Anyway, uh, Takashi Miike is a is a, a favorite director of mine. Taka- he is, he literally does. I think he, at one time he's done six movies a year, and That's crazy. it's crazy because he's he just does every variety of type of film. He's but you can certainly tell it's his film whenever he directs them. Uh, his biggest crossover hit was a Japanese film called Thirteen Assassins, and that actually won a couple of awards, or I believe it it, it got high high praise from plenty of um, film festivals. And it's it's about a, a group of assassins that go on to t- take on the, this feudal lord in Japan. How many assassins? <laughs> I think there's one, two, three, <laughs> four. So okay. <laughs> Aku no Kyoten is a light novel that was written um, a couple years, obviously a couple years ago. This movie was in two, 2012. I feel like it's, it's it was much closer, but I, I guess I'm wrong. Uh, 2012. It's about this teacher named Hasumi, who's this sort of 
I be, he looks like half Asian, half white. I can't tell, but then again, he he has a really he has a really dis- specific look. Like, he has he a very really distinct unique. look. Yeah, he he looks uh he looks like an idol. Like a, he's like definitely a, like a freaking model or something. Yeah, yeah. De- most certainly, he's definitely like one of those guys that you like. You know, when they put that comparison, uh, who what is it? The guy not to worry about that sort of uh, you uh, know when they erectile put two pictures dysfunction. Of, very good. I don't know what the fuck we were just talking about. So this film is about uh, a sociopath who is under the guise of a high school teacher. It's very much uh, like an American Psycho type of f- uh, film. And he and goes to he teaches in the school that if <coughs> this is any fair comparison of Japanese schools, I'm I wish I was Japanese because it looks like they're just yeah. having like a fun adventure in school every day with the like school, archery the schools in this film uh, the schools in this film um, in Lesson of the Evil it sh- actually gives you a glimpse of how Japanese high school life is and it really is like this well whenever I've seen because I'm I can't I can't understand it like no wonder they're so their culture is so rich they have like fucking like endless adventures in school if you look on YouTube there's plenty of expats like people that used to be uh I wonder if there's any phrasing for because you know expat is a person that used to live in America and then they moved somewhere else. No, it's not only America. It's any. No, I understand any- that, but I, I wonder if it, if that's the genesis because of the patriot. You know what I mean? The word patriot, expat. I'm not sure because I guess that could well, be a universal. Well, I word, met right? British expats on my travels. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Hey, look at me, America's number one. So I take it as our uh, word. Um, anyway, so there's plenty of. Uh, <laughs> In international students, American YouTubers that go to Japan or Canadian YouTubers that go to Japan, and they show you know high school life and stuff like that if they're in that age range, and you can actually see the whole thing where the kids, they they have they make the kids actually clean the classrooms themselves. They don't have janitors really, so it's sort of a a, a world round rounding experience for kids. Um, so they yeah. there's they they have kids like basically there's this uh, typical thing you'd ever see in cartoons, Japanese cartoons where kids clean by essentially bending over and having their hands on a rag and then they sprint forwards like whopping wa- wiping oh, the I've floor that. so that kind of thing i think i said an, <laughs> i think i just said you a know, racist they term for saved, italians they should have saved all their efforts because they're all going to be killed so, yeah you, know. I, you should he should have left two of those kids over at least to mop up the blood of the floor so this is very yeah. much like i was saying it's very much like american psycho where there's this guy who's on the outside, sort of this normal, handsome, uh, popular guy, but he's an absolute sociopath, psychopath, killer on the inside. It doesn't have the humor of... Although, in all fairness, American Psycho, I wouldn't have liked Patrick Bateman, even if That's I didn't true. know he was a killer. Yeah, Amer- uh, Patrick Bateman is sort of... He's less charming uh, than this guy is. He's um, charming if you're into, like, swarmy Wall Street fuck faces. Yeah, those, the, that guy is mostly... Uh, uh, mostly of his own ilk like he's probably part of a rich crowd this guy's actually supposed to be teaching kids and he does a good job of it except for i guess when things he's he's a guy's essentially painting himself into a corner a psychopath that's painting himself minus into a corner. minus having sex with his students that's true and uh blackmailing his other teachers and are you saying that's people. the good point to him or i'm not sure no i'm saying i'm saying <laughs> i'm saying these are bad things that he does oh i see uh, tomatoes, yeah. tomatoes. So Hasumi is an English teacher in Japan, and uh, everybody everybody really likes him, uh, pretty much, except for one or two holdouts, uh, a, a fellow teacher that smells something wrong with him. Essentially, uh, you can tell this is sort of a book uh, that this is based on a book because there's a lot of material in this film. There's a there's a lot, and there's like in this thirty film. characters. Yeah, it's really hard to keep track of all the characters. Uh, even yeah. if I look in the, we have to like basically label them by what they do in the film, uh, sort yeah, of either takes like, or how they dress or well, the way they act. There's a guy named sexy, Case, sexy gym teacher guy. There's an actually a prequel series that came out. I don't know whether that's based on the book or it was just a spinoff, but it retains uh, half of the cast. And I wish somebody subtitled it. I would love to watch it because it's essentially Hasumi um, teaching before this film happens. But it, it takes place in the same school, and we have K K two, who's the the teacher who gets hanged. You know the one that gets killed to make it look like a suicide. That yeah. suspects him and tips off the police and tips off other students. That well, what could happen in the prequel? Assuming. Because in the prequel, dies. I think he's just chasing down one woman. From the trailer I saw, I think he's just sort of tra- chasing down one woman to kill her, and I assume she's going to be killed by the end of that series because you know there's no mention of a female teacher in this film that's that has any prominence in the movie. Um, yeah. And essentially, in the trailer, this woman's running around and she gets scared in the trailer. And I'm like, yeah, she's probably dead. <laughs> the fucking, you know, in the sh- at, by the end of the series. 
Well, um, we know he gets away with it. Obviously, yeah. So anyway, so we have that kind of factor in. It's like I was saying. It's it, there's a lot of material in this film that gets covered, and it feels like this feels like if they they crammed twelve episodes of a series into a two uh, two hour film. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I mean, there's a lot of films that you can kind of get lost. It's a it's an uh, a 128 minute film. Um, I I bless you. I like it. I like that they put so much material in this film because I like films that have a lot of material in it and it, and it isn't feeling like dragging. Because there's plenty of two hour films where you're like, oh my god, just get on with this shit already. But yeah. also the fact that, that it's a no, I didn't feel that way at all. This movie the fact is like that it's also awesome. it's a it's a serial killer film, which actually perks me up into ty- that type of films. I'm like fascinated by that type of you know, you know what makes these people work, and you don't really know what makes this guy work. He's just sort of born different, as we see in the beginning of the first, like in the first five minutes of the film, we see we assume. Yeah, it took me that. a while to figure out that that was supposed to be a flashback. Because the film too. starts out with a flashback, or f- you, you just see this kid kill his parents after he has killed his neighbor because they suspect their child, or something's wrong with him. And, you know, going into the film, you know the movie's about a, I guess, did you know that the movie was about a teacher killing kids, or no? No, I didn't really know what it was about. Because the okay, so that might have description you. says it's about cheating on tests or something like. There, there's a lot of things about this film that I think um, makes the two hours uh, run sort of interesting. The fact that you get to see this different culture of school life, you get to see, um, you know, just Japan in general. Because well, literally, like half of it is just like straight up just killing people. Yeah, the, like the latter I, half I of this the film body count is. Minutes. It's one of the highest body counts I've ever seen in like a non-zombie movie. And this Japan has a knack for making films that would never be um, <laughs> remade here in America. Uh, besides yeah. Ghost in the Shell, where they'll turn all the characters white. <laughs> but um, this <laughs> one, like, this is a film where just because in America, you know, Sandy Hook and and um, although they made films about uh, what you call it, uh, what was that that high school? Uh, Colorado. Columbine. Columbine. Those idiots in Columbine shooting up their school. I saw a movie called Elephant there, and I remember watching with my friend, and I don't know Basketball what Basketball Diaries. No, but that was like a dream sequence, wasn't it? They don't really shoot anybody, did they? I don't know. What a, they Very call whatever good. they want. You know, but... you can get a boner watching Leonardo DiCaprio shoot people in his dreams. But anyway, but with <laughs> this type of film and also Battle Royale, which is a film that essentially, if you want to see Battle Royale sort of light, just go watch The Hunger Games, uh, which is also sort of a version of Running Man. So... Um, Battle Royale had the high school kids stuck on an island shooting at each other. We got to do that film too. That movie was really fun. Um, but yeah. this film, yeah, they they won't redo this film just because it's school shootings and shit like that. It's not to belittle that situation. Well, what's ironic about horrendous. it is that they have this stuff in Japan. They probably have a lot less school shootings than we have in America. So. They have a lot of school stabbings <laughs> though, because there's not there's, stabbings are better than shootings. <laughs> they, uh, Jesus Lord. Uh, no, yeah, it's there's, true, there's, though. You could you could knock a knife out of someone's there's, hand. There's there's some pretty uh, yeah, but I remember reading recently that there was a a guy who went into a children's school and he just started stabbing children. I don't think he killed any, but that's like you know it's they're like there's some weird crimes that go on in Japan. I think I spoke about it the second time we recorded this, but there is like uh, in Japan there's there's not really guns over there because it's sort of like you know yeah. like just when we saw I Am a Hero, like the one character had a gun and he was just following the rules every three seconds. Yeah. And it's sort of like um, in Japan, if you really look up Japanese crimes, man, oh man, there's some fucked up shit going up over there. That's I mean, obviously in America, it's like triple the crimes in America than there is in Japan. But the types of crimes are different because it's there's more of a, I guess an intimacy since everybody uses. You know how they always say using a knife. They dress up in robot suits when they commit their crimes. <laughs> they build little cities and then they step on it and they. You put see, yeah, right. Music. But uh, there's a there's. Um, I remember in, in school violence in Japan, this there was a kid who actually decapitated his one of his friends, and then oh left God. the head in front of the school for everybody to find. And I think he had a note inside the mouth saying, "You know, this will be my first stuff like that." And uh, you know, there's just and that kid actually got to make a, a book, and uh, he he went to jail because they actually do believe in um, rehabilitation in Japan. So yeah. they, they they make you go to jail. And you can. He wrote a book about it and wasn't like really didn't give a shit about what he did. So, 
You know, I'd rather. Yeah, how do you rehabilitate somebody who decapitates their friend? I'd rather like launch people into the moon. If you can prove that they did something bad, launch them into the yeah, moon. Yeah, but then you'd have an evil moon race that would come <laughs> back to haunt you. It'll make you know the face of the man on the moon. It'll just have a scowl on it because all the people making the eyebrows. <laughs> uh, and then there was this other one where I think um, what was it? I think we spoke about it last time. Uh, now I gave it because I'm sure you forgot about it, but I'm going to remind you about the three what? guys, the three teenage guys that kidnapped a teenage girl and tortured her for many numbers of days like i mean i if you read it up it's called the oh and they didn't like get in any trouble or something right no they went they got in jail and they got released i mean they went to like rehab jail for kids uh essentially sure. it's called i think uh the, the um um concrete concrete um what the hell are they, what do you call the a concrete drum, drum murder or something like that where they took this girl they essentially tortured her to death this teenage girl and then they put her inside right. of a fucking concrete um uh dip inside of a fucking huge uh uh, uh basin barrel? or something like that yeah barrel okay. and then they you know they just dumped her body and then they got away with it that so it's, there's a lot of crimes in japan that show this film shows there's a character like that i don't mean to go on that japanese crime thing but it's kind of fascinating read a book by called yeah. ja, J- japanese Vi- or japan vice or vice japan that's a good book um so you can tell i'm fascinated by this weird shit so this teacher <laughs> Hasumi is sort of like the the clean-cut guy that everybody is uh emulates and they really they love him you know what i mean so well, for he's fact, a great guy even after all the crimes he commits he's still a nice he guy. still is nice he he talks to birds he uh has a gun he that dances talks to, him to too. jazz <laughs> yeah, so that's another thing. The film, the song "Mac the Knife," Mac which is knife. played, which plays really over this great, great use of it in this movie. Yeah, they make they have like about three versions of the classic song "Mac the Knife," uh, which is a song I think uh, um, over here, Old Blue Eyes made famous. I'm sure there was other singers that made it famous. I could be wrong. I've but, heard uh, it like so many times at work. Yeah, and it, and they it's a great use of it in this one. They have a German version, they have like a waltz version, and they have a really good you know. Towards the end of the film, they use the classic version when he's shooting up all the kids. the The latter half of the film is obviously a a school shooting film, and I've never seen this amount of um, in succession body count in a movie yeah and i was, crazy. I was pretty it's, impressed it must be like a hundred deaths in this but movie. this is a film this is a, a thing about a film where the difference between this and american psycho is that i sort of root for um patrick bateman in american psycho because for the most part he's sort of killing other scumbags yeah. um although he, he's killing prostitutes and that's like a different thing because they they sort of um you know they have to well make they don't deserve money. to be killed those so, are danny's yeah. heroes <laughs> But then also, like, in this, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like th- they're kids. So I actually, actually feel bad for kids because, you know, when you're young, you sort of don't know what you're doing. And you're looking up to people and you sort of trust people. You're not like the, tr- the trustless scumbags like Danny. I mean, that. did he let, are you saying that he betrayed their trust? Because I think he <laughs> really did a good job. He didn't say he wasn't going to kill them, so I guess he didn't lie to That's them, right? That's true. He didn't lie. <laughs> so what happens in this film essentially is Hasumi gets him, paints himself in a corner, like I said before. He, um, he interacts with a bunch of students in this film. There's a well, we get book. to learn. We get to learn about him going to America <coughs> There's a, and yeah. developing. There's like a kid. Uh, I call him Butterfly Knife because he was the one. He was uh, essentially running a scam where he could uh, text answers to other students so they can cheat. Is that on their the tests. eye solder guy? Ugh. I call him Butterfly Knife. Oh yeah, that's him. Um, Butterfly Knife is this kid who uh, tried to cheat with tests, and there's a bully that picks on him. And they get killed. There's these two kids that I think probably had bigger... Uh, I'm going to call them the lovebirds because they're like the main characters that are in the beginning and then they disappear and then reappear towards the latter half of the film. So I, I, I'm sure each of these characters have a lot more material in the novel that this is based on because they're, uh, they're sort of paper thin. The students in this film are for the most part paper thin. And yeah, it's I wish they developed the uh, that stupid kid that goes back for his girlfriend and gets shot with an arrow. I wish they developed them more. Yeah, because be, there's a lot of characters. There's a lot, a lot of characters in the film, but we're essentially um, with a 2D sort of lead villain uh, who is Hasumi, and that's and it's not necessarily a bad thing because I was still entertained by the film. But a lot of the characters in the film are mostly flat. I can't, for the li- uh, for my memory, think of anybody that had real depth to them in this movie. Only the cheating kid and uh, some of the teachers. 
and um, what's it called? Uh, but yeah, I think they're mostly. Really... I oh, think and the most... girlfriend, his girlfriend. Yeah, but I think they're mostly playing off of their role. There's nothing. Maybe the girl that was bullied a lot, maybe, but she's not even really a character. What's, uh, what's his girlfriend? The one that he steals her panties and pushes off the roof. Yeah, that's the one. That's I think was it Maya or um, Mayumi? I believe it. Her name is. So Maya what, what happens? Correct. What what happens in the film? Um, Hasumi Mia. That's her name. Sorry, Mia is her name. Uh, Hasumi uh, protects the virtue of this one girl who I think was caught stealing, and and a gym teacher. Um, essentially blackmailed her into a sexual relationship. So Asumi told the guy to go fuck off. And um, then he starts having a relationship with the girl. So this shows you, uh, <laughs> you're thinking, oh, Asumi's an okay guy. You know, he's not like a... Um, yeah, at first you think... He has a code nice of guy. conduct. He's just a killer. He's not a monster. And then you're like, nah, he's, he's a piece of shit as well. And uh, eventually what mm-hmm. he wants to do is he wants to... What puts him in the the precipitous uh, uh, problem is that he, uh, essentially his girlfriend, his little, she wants to go public or somebody finds out about it. So he's like, I got to kill her. He throws her off the roof, uh, which she actually survives in the after credits or during before the credits. Yeah, what would happen with that? They led me to believe there'd be a sequel. And another student, uh, I think, I don't know, I think it was just goofing with the audience. And then another student sees him, so he kills her as well. And he decides at the last minute, in his mind, he was like, fuck it, I have to now kill all the students and frame this uh, gay teacher who was having an affair with another a male student. So he really fucks himself in the end by doing that. Um, yeah. If he hadn't fu- had sex with that teenage girl, carried on a relationship with her, this probably would, none of this like insanity would have happened towards the latter half of the film. But as you see, Hasumi is not a normal thinking person. He's a psychopath. <laughs> And he is, uh, he's one of those people that just kind of consume, consume, consume. Well, we find that he's like truly a psycho because then he sees his gun talking to him and it's that guy Dave from America. Yeah, there is a middle, there's a middle section of the film that tries to not really explain what's going on, but give him an origin of what he does. Uh, yeah. Sort of. I think the beginning, the opening that he kills his family is probably a, a point. Yeah, but we get to see him like harnessed into a normal person. Yeah, so he it. was going to school for another reason in America, and he actually um, meets this other student named, uh, not a student, yeah, I guess he is another student, uh, like another yeah, college Dave. guy named Dave. And for some reason on IMDb, they call him fucking Clay, and in Variety, there's a, they say the name Clay too, so who knows what's going on. And they uh, go on a Dave. they go on a krilling spree, and the guy who plays uh, Dave is this actor named Jab, and I use the word actor loosely because this guy be the worst fucking actor I've ever seen in a Japanese film, and like <laughs> I think in Japan because there's not that many Amer- many American actors that like if you were not you or I went over there and we spoke we, were, game, like, we uh, spoke uh, Japanese Genera. perfect, they would think we're fucking you know. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a good actor. <laughs> we don't really have good actors anymore. Robert De Niro, or something. No, not even him. Gary Oldman or something. We'll think they'll think we're like genius actors over there, because yeah. you know we can remember our lines and, and talk to the right character on screen. It, it, the guy it's so Dave, bad. The acting is so bad though that it's actually good. Yeah, I mean it's over the top horrible. It's really bad acting from that guy, but it's almost charming in a way because you're like, oh, this guy looks like. To me, it looks like a guy who won a trip to Japan and a, and a walk-on role in this film because it doesn't seem <laughs> right. Anyway, so him and uh, Dave are, you know, I guess killing people. There's parts where they, they're bringing barrels full of people's blood and guts and shit. And he ends up killing Dave. And, and it, 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 there's nothing clear about what the fuck happens in that scene. I even looked up, you know, the wiki, and I still don't understand what happened in the scene. But th- he, there's like this he older... He gets f- tutored by that guy Dave and then he kills Dave you know no no but the scene directly after that is like a French guy like with a really thick accent that I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying oh I think he knows that he killed him so he basically bans him and makes him leave yeah instead of you know charging him you know, like right. with jail time. It doesn't make any sense. I think he was t- took the fall for something. I really don't he doesn't understand. Want, he doesn't want his school to be associated with murder. I guess it could be that. Yeah. I didn't think he was associated with the school, so I wasn't sure about what the hell was going on with that scene. Anyway, so know. that leads on later because Dave's, uh, the spirit of Dave, apparently in Hasumi's mind, because Hasumi's losing his mind, uh, obviously. But in the film, when he takes this, uh, this uh, what is it, a shotgun or a rifle, I mean, a rifle and starts blasting people, his rifle morphs in a very anthropomorphic gun that has Dave's voice and video a cartoon drone. and this kind of monstrous, yeah, video drum sort of gun. And um, there's also halfway through the film, he there's these two um, crows 
Uh, were they ravens or crows? I forget. I think they're probably crows. These two crows I, they're that very, uh, they're very closely related. There's these two crows that sort of bother him um, throughout the whole film, um, and he tries to kill them because he believes that they're keeping an eye on him, on him like sort of like this Greek legend of these two uh, birds that watch people and they go back to Odin and tell him. Uh, I guess Odin is not a Greek one. Yeah, that's he does mention god. Odin. Yeah, so that's a Norse god. That's not a Greek god. And uh, so he, uh, at the end of the film, there's this whole section where the two characters that survive that actually pull off, you know, they out, they out maneuver um, Hasumi's murder spree by the end of the film. There's literally like, probably like 50 kids that die at the end of this film. Uh, they throw two yeah. bodies down this emergency shaft. And the thing is, I like that everything has a payoff. Um, for the most part, like stuff that's noted at the beginning of the film comes back towards the end and it doesn't feel cheap. Like when they're giving those um, CPR lessons and then they show, oh, we take this tube that we throw out the window so you can slide out out of safety. Yeah, that's true. They do foreshadow. So they, it's foreshadowing towards the end of the film and they, they throw down these two bodies and Asumi thinks he's killed those two students. Um, and, you know, they get out and he s ends up seeing them as two birds. And I thought... When I first saw that, I thought, oh, Jesus, are those two people actual birds? Because, you know, you can't really trust Nikkei's <laughs> films. Like, Gozu and everything that he... Every film well, that Gozu I've seen... Gozu is, like, over the top right. weird. But even, like, Itchy the Killer had scenes where Gigi, the old man, is talking to Itchy. And then, like... I remember a specific scene where Itchy... Uh, Gigi walks out of the room and then Gigi's not there anymore it was fucking strange it's like one room, one scene in that film just made absolutely no sense in the film and I'm thinking uh -huh. okay Mike's doing some sort of because um, Mike, when he can can be sort of like who's your favorite who's your, that director that you like the guy that does Twin Peaks oh David Lynch he's not my favorite director but well I like I, yeah that's what I meant the director that you made, he, but he can definitely do Lynchian stuff where you're like what the fuck just happened in this scene like <laughs> it could be a yeah, completely normal film very artsy fartsy like I remember seeing the I think the only the only Lynch film I think I've seen is Mulholland Drive and I or was it Mulholland La Falls what the hell was it Mulholland Drive you right? gotta watch Twin Peaks man okay very good so I was watching Mulholland Drive, and I was like, okay, this is a good movie. And then the last 10 minutes of the film, I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Because I don't think it had any connection to what I was watching as a film. And Mike can't do that with his film. So I thought, uh-oh, like, uh -oh, did those birds turn into kids at the end of the film? Like, I was literally, but then when I... <laughs> uh-oh, I hope not. Uh-oh. But by the second time I saw it, I was like, okay, it was just Hosumi literally going nuts. Like, he saw these two kids. He, he, um, he essentially replaced the birds as the two kids watching him and I'm sure people who saw that in the theater were like what the hell is this um, <laughs> very racist voice stop that Danny um, but I, I, I liked it I liked the film I actually was there were there things about this film that you didn't like uh, no this film is fucking awesome it I'm is I'm very glad we chose it did I choose this or did you choose it I believe I believe I had mentioned it earlier but then you decided to choose it Oh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm a genius. I should have. I'm glad Very that good. I did that. Um, yep. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I really can't find a fault with this film besides um, Dave's acting. Uh, yeah, but that's like charming, like you said. Yeah. So this is a film where it's essentially is a lot of uh, two dimensional characters, but I think it works. And they for all the film. die. <laughs> yeah, so they become zero dimension. But I think they all work for the film. I think everything that happens in the film happens for a reason. It doesn't feel forced. It's so it feels like it's a book because it's it's a movie where there's so much. Ooh, it feels like a woman. Du, 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 du. You know that song? Yeah, du, I do. She, she was hot. Remember her? She was hot. She was super. She hot. was okay. I, I'm trying to remember. When she first came I feel out, like she was like quite old. Am I wrong? No, no. When she well, she used to be young once. That's Danny being an ageist against women. If you want to write Danny. You oh gotta, no, she is hot. I'm looking at her again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you got to read her story. It's pretty fucked up what happened to her. Uh, she's all right now, but oof. Anyway, so uh, I, I think everything in here happens. A reason, if the, even if the characters are two dimensional, they all serve a purpose to move the plot forward. Do it's you, one of those. Do you think that they'll make a sequel based on that girl surviving? I do Ever. not think so. I do not think they'll make a sequel to this. Maybe I don't know not how... a movie, but do you think they'll make like a, a comic sequel or something? I believe they adapted this as a comic, so maybe. But then again, I don't know what if... If this is based on a book, I don't know if the book had a sequel or... You know what I mean? If it continued in any form, maybe it was just supposed to end the way it was. Because at the end, they very they very much ended open... Usually in these type of films, you would f expect the villain to die a horrible death. Although that didn't happen in Itchy the Killer because Itchy 
sort yeah. of not no Ichi that's a bad example because Ichi was sort of like Batman in his own film but he was just fucked up this yeah, film yeah he was a nutty Batman well Batman in these, in these horror types of Japanese films they usually kill the bad guy or maybe not I'm not sure because I've read a couple of like manga they, the things with Japanese comic books they're not afraid of like letting the villain win well, this you guy know, to goes you... to this guy goes to jail. He doesn't die. Yeah, he gets arrested. That's what I mean. So they they arrest him, and they sort of set it up so there's going to be a sequel by him. He said it's like this is the first part of the game. Like he's going to act crazy in jail and find some way to get out. That's what's implied, but you really never get that sort of you know answer. You do you do know that you, he gets arrested, and a whole bunch of police see that he is guilty of what he's done. So yeah. it's that's sort of a closure for the film itself. I love the way he gets caught too. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's a it's a good movie. I mean, I don't know what else we can say about it. I I enjoyed it a lot. For Mike, for sure, it shows a certain there's a restraint in it. Even though obviously the last half latter half of the film is a fucking splatter fest and a really disturbing splatter fest, especially yeah. If you think about it, if you're in the situation and the kids are like that that one scene that bothers me the most is when they're in the corridor uh, of the stairwell. And he's like just shooting them by going up the oh, staircase. Oh yeah, they're and all stuff. like piled up and trying to like. Cringe and the fact, yeah, and you're watching bad. these kids essentially shit bricks because he's reloading his gun and they're, he's waiting to shoot them. So it's like, you know, it's and really they just, scary. Like, they can't even move as he's reloading the gun because they're too scared. They're so frightened out of their mind. You know what I mean? And it's it's a that that aspect of the film is really fucking frightening. Like. Because, you know, anybody can go with slashing and knives and shit like that, which can happen in real life as well, and stabbing, stuff like that. But when yeah. it's like a gun thing, you know, that's like, that's really spooky. That's that's super spooky. Because um, I think that the injury... Super w- spooky. With knives, you're scared of the injury, but with guns, you're just instantly scared of getting shot to death and just not coming out of it. Uh, but yeah. I, I I think it's a, a, it's a solid film. Uh, I give this movie a 9 out of 10 killing a bad actor and then his bad voice acting returns as a gun that tells you to kill more people <laughs> okay i'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10 um killing your girlfriend but first taking her panties so you have a memory of her that's fabulous who wouldn't want to do that and with that danny what's the final word india ink Deconstruction.